connection to Ukraine came, in fact, incidentally. Um, I served in the country in the 1990s as a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer. I had been uh, initially selected to serve in Fiji by the Peace Corps, in fact, but a, a few weeks before my departure, I was asked to go to Ukraine instead. Now, I had uh, studied classics in college. I had no knowledge of a, of a Slavic language or really of Ukraine beyond a few elemental facts. So that call really changed my life. And after years of serving as a teacher in a village in central Ukraine, I came home to the States, uh, began, as many do, uh, to try to pay off undergraduate loans. Uh, but I could not lose this nagging feeling, um, this, this sense that my prior ignorance of Ukraine was part of a broader and much larger intellectual and even institutional problem. So I decided to address it. I decided to go back to school to pursue graduate study and to focus on Ukraine and Ukrainian culture um, in particular. As for Columbia University, when I decided to embark on a PhD, I always knew that I wanted to focus on Ukrainian culture. It was always at the center of my attention. It always surprised and provoked me. And I was very much drawn to the interdisciplinarity of the Ukrainian Studies program at Columbia, which was led at the time by versatile scholars like Mark Van Hagen and Vitaly Chernetsky when I arrived. Um, Mark and Vitaly and, and many others worked alongside Columbia Slavic Department, uh, the Harriman Institute, of course, the Center for Comparative Literature and Society, and they foregrounded Ukraine um, both as a, a dynamic, complex object of knowledge and also as a laboratory for the study of global historical and cultural processes. And I found myself endlessly fascinated. Um, Columbia also was a place that regularly hosted outstanding scholars like Yaroslav Ritsak, uh, Volodymyr Kulik, and Frank Sisson in particular, who has been a really formative and supportive presence in my career and I think in the career of, of so many others. Um, one of my fondest memories of these years at Columbia, uh, especially today since Mark's passing, is uh, the memory of joining in this team taught course in Ukrainian history, in which Mark and Frank defied the teleological presentation of Ukraine's past and worked backwards in time, raising a lot of provocative counterfactuals and, and really pointing to an essential truth about Ukraine and its emergence as the largest country within Europe. And that truth is that Ukraine defied sociocultural gravity. It came together um, out of the peripheries of empires on the basis of a pervasive idea of freedom and justice at odds with Polish aristocracy to the West and, and Russian autocracy to the East. Um, so really, uh, Colombia was uh, and is um, a remarkable place to be, to learn, um, and its Ukrainian studies program still always, I think, seizes on the energy and dynamism inherent in, my, in our field. Um, and I really try to promote and contribute to that energy in whatever way I can. I'm really actually pleased to be able to speak a bit here to the contributions of the Yatsik Foundation, the Yatsik family. Um, I think supporting an entire field of study takes long-term vision. And to be frank, these days, I think long-term vision is in short supply. And that's, I think, what makes the many interventions and contributions of the Yatsik family and the Yatsik Foundation so special and so important. They have moved the tectonic place in our study of Europe and Eurasia. It's not an exaggeration. And, and the impact will be felt for, for generations to come. Um, but even look at what's happened um, in less than 30 years, because today there are permanent programs in the study of Ukraine across continents, programs that emerge to address longstanding failures of academic knowledge or public awareness by the time Ukraine faced the greatest threat to its existence as an independent state. And look at the Hrushevsky translation project alone. 
which not only introduced the international academic community, as it were, to a giant of, of scholarship and erudition, but it also places Ukrainian history on an absolutely rock solid footing as an international field, because every volume of that project is a vast resource for students and scholars. Um, every footnote and I do this constantly with my own uh, postgraduate students. Every footnote is an opportunity for an, an enthusiastic young scholar to pursue. There's so much rich material that the, the translation project has made available to us. And I'm extremely grateful for, um, for the resource itself. And I think the trajectories uh, for Ukrainian studies as a field that emerge from a project like this one are really and truly endless. And again, it takes visionary philanthropy to realize it, to have realized it. Uh, and it is a monumental accomplishment. The inception of Cambridge Ukrainian Studies in 2018, our program has trained well over 400 students or so at Cambridge. And we've only really done so thanks to the collaboration and support of partner institutions in North America uh, and in Ukraine, of course, thanks to colleagues like Frank Sisson and many others who have really never ceased to um, offer us with great generosity all of these first class scholarly publications and resources. Without them, we couldn't build a, a program here. And overall, uh, I continue to remain extremely optimistic about the future of our field because Ukraine is a incredibly dynamic, um, demonstrably, and sometimes even tragically, um, a geopolitically pivotal country that is the largest within the European continent. And our, and our students at Cambridge um, are quite curious and, and very pragmatic. Um, all of them are of British extraction mostly. None of them come from a Ukrainian or Slavic background, but they look at the map of Europe and they see a place that pops up in countless headlines, but remains poorly understood. So they, they see the academic intellectual opportunity that Ukraine presents. And our job is to help them achieve uh, achieve their objectives. And, and if, if we do so, um, I'm convinced that we will be making intellectual connections between students, the public, and Ukraine in ways that will last uh, for a very long time. And in general, I'm convinced that the international study of Ukraine has tremendous upside, provided that we keep taking academic risks, provided that we do our best to engender more creativity and connection in our field. So in this respect, I feel that the support of the Yatsik Foundation has been pivotal it has contributed greatly to the growth of the field and will continue to do so. I hope we can maintain the momentum. I'm proud to have uh, some part in that. And uh, at Cambridge, we're always looking to, to contribute.